much less expensive than I thought due to all of the incentives out there. Now my biggest electric bill is around 20 bucks and during the summer months I get credits instead of a bill. Pretty cool. This time on the Go Green channel I'm going to show you how to go solar at your house from incentives all the way to installation. The big question is, is your house right for solar? Now, most people think that their house has to face due south to take advantage of solar. My house faces east and west, so I thought for years that solar wouldn't work. But when I had an installer out for a free estimate, he showed me how I could orient the panels on the low slope west roof and still generate 90% of the power of a perfectly oriented system. He also said that most residential systems fall into that 85 to 95% range, so my house would work fine. While roof installations are the most common, you might also want to look at solar shingles, solar roof tiles, or flexible solar sheets that adhere to metal roofs. Or you could mount standard panels on a rack on the ground. Those options will cost a bit more, but they might help make solar work for you. One issue is shading. That's one big reason panels are usually mounted up high. That keeps them above the level where they can be shaded by trees or other houses. Even partial shading can dramatically cut the output of a solar array. So you want to make sure to trim or remove trees that might shade your system during peak hours in the middle of the day. Next, have a look at incentives. DSIREUSA.org is a one-stop shop for incentives. The full name is Database of State Incentives for Renewables and Efficiency. But the site lists federal, state, and local tax credits, grants, and rebates, along with utility company offers as well. Just click on your state and the information, which is updated weekly, will be right at your fingertips. It's not only a great place to find out how much you can save right off the bat, but you'll also find out if low interest loans are available for your project. Now, I was able to save nearly 75% on the cost of my system with a combination of the Federal Renewable Tax Credit, State Grant, and Selling the Solar Renewable Energy Credits, or SRECs. Now, every state is different, but all Americans can use the 30% Federal Renewable Energy Tax Credit. Once your installer has done a site check, they'll give you an estimate and a design plan for your system. They'll also help you take advantage of the financial incentives. Typical installations only take a day or two. First, metal posts called standoffs are bolted to the roof, right into the rafters below. Then they're properly flashed and sealed. The flashing is different for each type of roof. Here, I used rubber flashing called witch's hats along with the proper sealants to make my standoffs weather tight. You'll also notice that my system is installed on a white rubber roof. Generally speaking, the lighter colored your roof surface is, the cooler it will stay during hot summer months. Since solar panels are slightly less efficient at high temperatures, this will help keep the energy output high on hot days. Next, the rails that will hold the panels are installed. And then the panels go into place. The panels are clamped to the rails and each one is connected to the next. Most panels these days have plug and play connections that are weather tight. Then the panels are connected to the inverter, which is usually in the garage or another sheltered area. Since the panels put out DC or direct current power and our homes use AC or alternating current electricity, the inverter will change the power from DC to AC. The wires that connect the panels to the inverter will run through conduit. Mine goes down through the roof and an inside wall, but the conduit can be run down the exterior of a home as well. The inverter has lots of delicate electronics in it, so it needs to be installed in a dry place. Usually the inverter is sized to fit the output of your panels. In this case, we installed a 4 kilowatt system and a 4 kilowatt inverter with spec. We wanted the ability to add more panels in a few years, so we asked to have a 7 kilowatt inverter installed. Then we'll be able to add new panels when we're ready. The wires from the panels on the roof connect to the inverter. The AC power is fed back into the house through the main breaker panel in our basement. Most systems these days are grid tied. This means that they're connected to the main electrical grid by the lines that come to your house. By tying the panels to the grid, you don't have to have batteries. You essentially use the grid as a battery. At night or when it's cloudy, you draw power from the grid. During the day, you automatically use your solar power, but when you make more power than you use, you sell the excess back to the grid. Most states make power companies use what's called net metering, which means that you get paid the same amount for the excess power you generate.